This conference will now be recorded. And then thiopentol, which is most commonly used even nowadays in all our what is including our hospital. It was introduced in 1935 by Lundy in Minnesota and Waters in Wisconsin, that is in USA. It is widely accepted because of lack of excitatory myoclonic movement seen with exobarbital. When we give exobarbital, patient will be excited and a lot of muscle jerks will be seen. That is not seen with thiopentol. That's why thiopentol has become wide standard and it is still now used in many parts of the world today also. And another one is methohexital, which is shorter acting barbiturate with CNA stimulating properties. It was introduced in 1956 for electroconvulsive therapy that is seen in psychiatric patients for maniac illness and all. We will see in movies and all, they will put some electrodes and give shock. For that procedures, uh, which are very painful, these ECT procedures commonly will use methohexital. And then ketamine, which is a wonder drug, synthesized in 1962 by Stevens and first human use in 1969. And then the latest drug is Propofol, which is white milk like structure you might have seen that is introduced in 1986 under the brand name Deprivan, which is most commonly used nowadays, not only in OTs, but also in ICUs, MRI sedations, casualties, and everywhere. For sedation, minor procedures for sedation, we'll use Propofol. And what are the properties of an ideal intravenous sensitive agent? So, for an agent to become the ideal intravenous sensitive agent, what properties it should possess? First, physical properties, it should be water soluble because we dilute all drugs in uh, DNS or uh, normal saline and it should be stable in solution. It should not dissociate, mix or react with the solution. And even an exposure to light, it should be stable and it, it should have long shelf life. And while giving intravenous injection, it should not produce any pain or it should not react with artery causing uh, any damage when we inject intraarterially. And it should not, it should be non-irritant when injected subcutaneously and low incidence of thrombophlebitis, first it should be very cheap. And the pharmacokinetic properties include rapid onset in one arm brain circulation time. One arm brain circulation means if we give some drug in an IV cannula placed in an arm, by the time it reaches the brain, that, that is known as, it will be around roughly around 15 to 18 seconds. In that short span of time, it should produce unconsciousness. Not, so, not that it should take 5 or 10 minutes, which will be very long in the emergency situations. So there should be rapid onset in one arm brain circulation time and rapid redistribution to vessel rich tissue and it should be rapid rapid clearance and metabolism that means it should not interact stay long away in the body it should not produce longer effects after the surgery is over and it should be metabolized without causing any toxicity or without any action so there should be no active metabolites and they should be excreted easily all these properties should be possessed by an ideal IV anesthetic agent so for the for this to happen, what are the, the properties uh, that will be suitable for ideal intravenous anesthetic agent? So rapid onset will be achieved by an agent that is mainly anionized at blood pH. That uh, blood pH you all know that is normal pH is 7.35 to 7.45, and it should be highly lipid soluble. So if it only if it is highly lipid soluble, it will penetrate the blood brain barrier. So what will give through the blood? It penetrates and enters into the brain and causes its effect by acting on the CNS and rapid recovery by ra uh, there should be rapid recovery caused by rapid redistribution uh, plasma concentration of drug decreases and drug diffuses out of the brain and quality of the recovery period related to the rate of drug metabolism and what are the pharmacodynamic properties there should be high therapeutic ratio that is ratio of toxic dose to minimal effective dose and there should be minimal effects on cardiovascular and respiratory system. No histamine release, or they should, it should not cause any hypersensitivity reactions, no emetic effects, no involuntary movements, no nightmares, no hangover effect, and no adrenal cortical suppression. And it should, it should be safe to use in porphyria patients. So what are the uses of intravenous anesthetics? So I have told you already, induction maintenance of anesthesia during surgical procedures and as a sole anesthetic for short procedures. So for short producer, we will not give these painkillers and uh, muscle relaxants and all. Only with sedation, we will produce, produce unconscious with this IV anesthetics. And intra, we have an intravenous infusion to maintain anesthesia for longer procedures. This technique is known as TIVA. That is total intravenous anesthesia where we will not use any inhalation anesthetics. And to produce, provide sedation in places like ICUs. So what happens when we give a bolus of induction drug? First, it enters the bloodstream. A percentage of drug is blown to plasma proteins and the rest is unbound. So protein binding depends on lipid solubility and degree of ionization. So it goes along with circulation to the right side of heart, through lungs to left side of heart, and from there to systemic circulation to various organs, including CNS, where it crosses the blood-brain barrier and produces the desired effect. So from induction to wake up, what happens? We will continue. 
high portion of initial bolus is delivered to cerebral circulation because we you know cardiac output uh, major portion of cardiac output is uh, shunted to main important organs with most blood supply and which are very important like brain liver and kidney which are vessel rich group organs so major portion of the drug along with this protein bound anesthetic what we have done will go to the brain and then passes along concentration gradient from blood into the brain and the rate of this trans also this rate of this transfer is dependent on number of factors like arterial concentration of the unbound drug lipid solubility and degree of ionization and unbound lipid soluble unionized molecules cross the blood brain barrier the quickest so then drug starts exerting its effect once it penetrates the cns tissue and uh, the mechanism of action is drugs will have specific receptors like a propofol thiopentone act on uh, gaba gamma amino butyric acid a receptors and ketamine or nmda receptor and some drugs and acetylcholine receptors after this uh, major vessel is group the remaining drugs starts to diffuse other tissues like skeletal muscles and all which have less blood supply and then this secondary tissue uptake so all these tissues which have less vessels like skeletal muscles will start taking the drug so plasma concentration will fall so again as per concentration gradient from vessel rich group like brain the drug will diffuse back into the blood uh, leading to decrease in uh, concentration in the cns and this leads to wake up finally this initial redistribution leads to the rapid wake up seen after a single dose of drug and the metabolism and plasma clearance have a much less important role following simple single bolus this is more important during prolonged infusions and repeated doses so how will you classify these intravenous anesthetics according to their chemical structure we can classify as barbiturates and the common ones include thiopentone and methohexital and then phenols propofol and imidazole etomidate pencyclidines and ketamine and benzodiazepines like metazole and diazepam and narcotics like fentanyl and morphine not only on chemical structure we can also classify based on the onset of action that is we have discussed you know one arm brain circulation time within one arm brain circulation time if it acts those are known as rapidly acting like thiopentone propofol and etomidate and slower acting drugs which take some more longer time than this one arm brain circulation time like ketamine and midazolam so coming to barbiturates Again, these are classified as thio and oxy barbiturates based on their chemical structure. And they use sodium bicarbonate to maintain alkaline pH of around 10 to 11. And this high alkalinity leads to severe tissue damage when we inject intraarterially. And the precipitation of drugs uh, with weak bases like vecronium and thio will give in same cannula without flushing immediately, there will be precipitation of drugs. And the most common drug that uh, diagram contains thiopentone. You can see in any operation theater anywhere. It is available as a powder form. It is ultra short acting, available as hygroscopic, pale yellow colored powder form. And normally ample contains 500 mg of sodium thiopentone. And we have discussed that uh, for stability, 6% sodium carbonate is added to prevent prevention of insoluble acid form. It is reconstituted with 21 and 20 ml of water. We will make it as 2.5 solution. What is the meaning of this 2.5 percent means? Per ml, it will contain 25 mg. We will dilute with that uh, normal saline or distilled water. And then we will use for injections. And this alkaline solution, once we dilute this powder form, it is bacteriostatic and we can use it for 48 hours. After that, we have to throw it. So main mechanism of action in the CNS, all these IV anesthetics act on central nervous system directly on the brain only. So main mechanism of action is interaction with inhibitory neurotransmitter GABA. When we stimulate that inhibitory neurotransmitter, more number of GABA is activated leading to CNS depression followed by unconsciousness. Always you should give intravenously and for induction, that is for producing the loss of uh, consciousness, we should give 4 to 5 milligrams per kg in adults. And children have large volume of distribution, so we will give more dose like 5 to 7 milligrams per kg. So what are the other uses? It's for status epileptic rest, that is refractory epilepsy, continuous seizure episodes for 30 minutes without any break and not responding to any drugs. Finally, we can give thiopentone in a dose of 3 to 5 mg per kg. Followed by infusion of that is bolus dose, and followed by same infusion dose of 3 to 5 milligrams per kg per hour. And for cerebral protection, when you suspect hypoxia and hypotension and you think that brain is damaging, we can give for cerebral protection also bolus of 3 mg per kg, followed by infusion of 5 to 6 mg per kg per hour to protect ischemic brain in neurosurgery patients, uh, stroke patients. This, and this technique is known as barbiturate coma.
what is the use of this means? It produces uh, total CNS depression and the brain can sustain low hypoxia for longer times due to less oxygen or less blood because its activity is low and it can, uh, without dying, the brain tissue will sustain longer by using this uh, thiopentone what that is known as Vardic rate coma. So, onset of action we have discussed previously, it is alpha short acting. So, within one arm brain circulation that is in less than 30 seconds, you will get loss of consciousness. And duration of action, uh, alpha half life is 10 minutes and beta is 45. And uh, routinely metabolized by liver and excreted by kidney. Volume of distribution 2.5 liters per kg. So, so, it follows the zero order kinetics. And pharmacodynamics, uh, central nervous system, first it causes dose dependent depression of CNS. How we will know end point of induction? Routinely, if you see in any operation theater during induction, after giving the routine drugs like uh, fentanyl, phrenalgesia, metazolam, like benzodiazepine for amnesia, after giving thiopentone, how we will know that patient lost consciousness is we will uh, take our finger or some cotton ball and uh, see the eyelashes, touch the eyelashes. If the patient does not respond, this is known as loss of eyelash reflex. And this is considered an endpoint of induction, particularly for thiopentone. And it reduces uh, cerebral blood flow and cerebral demand of oxygen and reduces the intracranial pressure. And it is a potent anti convulsant. And it is not analgesic. I should remember it is anti analgesic that decreases the threshold to pain. So analgesic requirements decrease. Increase. Sorry. And cardiovascular system, it causes hypertension due to peripheral vasodilatation. And uh, reflex increase in heart rate due to baroreceptor mediated sympathetic stimulation. And higher doses have negative inotropic effect and should be used with caution in hypovolemic and ischemic heart disease patients. Suppose you see some uh, emergency cases where patients are in dehydration, heart patients, we should not give thiopentone per induction because uh, due to its negative inotropic effect, there will be sudden hypotension and risk of cardiac arrest, which is very difficult to manage. And in the respiratory system, it causes transient apnea. And uh, with increase in dose, decrease in both tidal volume and minute ventilation. And the medullary center ventilator responses to both hypoxia and hypercapnia are reduced. And airway reflexes are not obtained well. Hence, unsuitable for while using an LMA. This LMA is laryngeal mask airway that is different from routine endotracheal tube use. It causes more airway reflexes. It will sit on the opening of the laryngeal inlet. It will not go into trachea. So, coughing, laryngospasm, all these side effects will be there. So, we should do the day per uh, IV anesthetic, which uh, suppresses the airway reflexes like propofol. So, for inserting these LMS, thiopentone is not recommended. And also, another side effect is histamine release can occur uh, in uh, susceptible patients. It can cause bronchospasm. So, what are the adverse effects of thiopentone? So, in, uh, accidentally, if you inject intraarterially thiopentone, it causes intense spasm of the artery due to its high alkalinity pH is high above 10, we have discussed, and therefore it must be avoided. If occurs, so how will you manage if there is accidental injection of thiopentone intraarterially? Stop further injection, but keep cannula in place because that is the way to give some other drugs to prevent further damage and to flush out this thiopentone. So never remove cannula from the artery when there is accidental intraarterial injection by thiopentone. First inject saline into the cannula and flush it. And then through the same cannula, inject preservative free lignocaine, which is another anesthetic drug, which is widely used in many areas. So to reduce the pain, inject lignocaine. And then papaverin, 40 to 80 mg, it causes vasodilatation. And then heparin, it prevents thrombus formation. And then if symptoms are severe, stellar ganglion block or brachial plexus blocks, these narrow blocks to achieve sympath sympatholysis, that is loss of this sympathetic supply. If there is so intense pain and the tissue is geopartizing and it is going into necrosis, then we should go for stellate ganglia or brachial plexus block that is higher rates of treatment. That much is not needed generally. And then thiopentone is also contraindicated in patients with the porphyrias due to stimulation of gamma amino and cancer reductase, leading to abdominal pain, psychiatric symptoms like hysteria, motor neuropathies, and then seizures, particle blindness, and coma. And then thiopentone uh, should also be avoided in patients with sulfur drug allergies. And thiopentone can be safely used in cesarean deliveries, but uh, we should not cross the doses greater than 8 mg per kg due to transplantal transfer of the drug. It may cause neonatal depression. And then coming to the most common and widely used propofol everywhere, this vial you see, it is like white milk liquid like structure available in 2% and 1% weight by volume also. The scientific name of this propofol is 2,6-di isopropyl phenol. 
available as one or two percent aqueous emulsions that is tiny fat droplets in suspension so it is white in color it is highly lipid soluble and contains 10 percent soybean oil 1.2 percent aglycin and 2.25 percent glycerol and this emulsion is unlike thiopentone it is an excellent medium for bacterial growth and to impede bacterial growth we will add a edta or sodium benzoate to prevent bacteria from growing and the main problem with propofol is it causes pain on injection. Nowadays, this propofol Lipuro is available. It contains both long and medium chain triglycerides in one to one ratio. It has less pain in injection than conventional propofol. And another fast propofol, a water soluble methyl phosphorylated prodrug of propofol. It does not have any pain in injection, but the onset of action is very slow. So it has PKF11 volume of distribution 4.6 liters per kg and 98% protein bonding not soluble in water. And pH is less than that of thiopentone, that is around 7 to 8.5. And mechanism action also like thiopentone acts on GABA receptors, activation of chloride channels, thus increasing its inhibitory synaptic transmission. And the onset of action, it is also short acting within one arm brain circulation time 15 to 20 seconds and duration is as you know, short acting rapidly redistribution eliminated. So within three to five minutes action will wear off you have to supplement with some other drugs later. Half life is three to alpha half life three to five minutes. And then elimination propofol is metabolized by con glucuronide and sulfate conjugation in liver. And also some extra hepatic metabolism. In Tayo, you have seen only kidney and liver, but in Propofol, you can see extra hepatic in lungs also. And pharmacodynamics, what are the effects of Propofol and different system? And CNS, there is dose dependent depression of CNS. And end point of induction is we have seen loss of ILS reflex in thiopentone, but here we have to see loss of response to verbal comments. That is, we can call patient name and we we should you ask simple commands you will not respond that is the end point of induction particular to propofol it also can be an anti convulsant this also reduces cerebral metabolic rate blood flow and reduces icp same like thiopentone but it can cause some involuntary movements during induction that are minor and we need not worry about them and cvs it also causes hypotension due to peripheral vasodilatation and marked in the elderly and shocked patients so always you should go in a running flowing uh, iv fluid and very slow injection and the respirator system also it causes transient apnea and unlike thiopentone it obtains airway reflexes very well so we can insert that laryngeal mask airway and everything and then g8 it has some anti-emetic properties so dose includes 2 to 2.5 in adults and 2.5 to 3 mg per kg in children for induction for maintenance 50 to 150 mics per kg per minute uh, that is for uh, continuous infusion for anesthesia for sedation a lesser dose 50 to 75 mics per kg per minute will be enough and it can be the sole anesthetic for short process like cardioversion and uh, it is also useful in daycare anesthesia and surgeries and useful in patients susceptible to malignant hyperthermia where we, we are not supposed to use the dangerous complication of some anesthetics like inhalation anesthetics and succinyl choline that is a different topic in that susceptible malignant hyperthermia patients we can safely use propofol this total intravenous anesthesia where no inhalations are used. For this, we can use propofol, which is most commonly used. A concentration of 2.5 to 8 mics per ml blood concentration is required to maintain that anesthesia. So for that, we have to give 1 mg per kg bolus, then 10 mg per kg per hour for 10 minutes, and 8 mg per kg per hour for the next 10 minutes, and then 6 mg per kg per hour thereafter. So then we can achieve the desired concentration. And also in the ICU critical ill patient sedation, we can use an infusion of 1 to 3 mg per kg per hour. It can also be either anti-emetic and anti pyretic and in safe in patients susceptible to power failures where thiopentone is contraindicated. And adverse effects, hypotension, it contains egg proteins, so allergic reaction in some individuals with allergy to egg proteins and pain and injection. So we can add 20 mg lignocaine for 20 ml and hypovolemic patients should be used cautiously. And you know this is an excellent medium for bacterial growth, susceptible to growth of microorganisms. So this discarded after 12 hours when we open a vial can cause involuntary epileptic form movements. And then there is one side effect, the complication of this propofol infusion, known as propofol infusion syndrome. It occurs due to prolonged infusion in small children and infants, and usually occurs when excess of 4 mg per kg per hour for greater than two days, that is 48 hours. If you continuously give propofol infusion, it interferes with mitochondrial mechanisms that leading to Metabolic acidosis, hyperkalemia, rhabdomyolysis, renal failure, cardiac uh, heart blocks, right bundle branch block, acetal hyperlipidemia. 
and management is ventilator support, intubation, cardiac respiratory support, hemodialysis, and hemodialysis. That's why we should not give larger doses for continuous prolonged infusions. We have to give intermittent breaks. And then this another drug, etomidate, it looks similar to propofol only, same like white milky like liquid. It is carboxylated imidazole ester and is weak base and poorly water soluble. It is also available as limited lipid emulsion at a concentration of 2 mg per ml. Propofol will get around 10 mg or 20 mg per ml. This etomidate is only 2 mg per ml. And we should not confuse with these two drugs because after loading both appear similar. So when you load the drugs, you have to see the label in the ampular vial and then carefully label it and use to prevent that mismatch of the drugs. And pain and injection is common and high rate of thromboplagotis is observed. And this also mechanism of action, same like a propofol, activation of chloride channels of GABA receptors and enhancing inhibitory synaptic transmission. This is also short acting within one arm brain circulation time and duration similar to propofol 3 to 5 minutes. And the dosage is lesser compared to propofol you have seen 2 to 3 mg per kg. This one for induction of anesthesia only 0.2 to 0.4 mg per kg intravenously. So pharmacodynamics uh, similar like uh, similar to propofol like dose different depression of CNS also can produce involuntary movements during induction recovery rapid. And the main advantage of this propofol most commonly uh, this etomidate sorry main advantage of etomidate is it has very less effect on CVS. This is cardio stable drug compared to thiopentan propofol. So for this all open heart surgeries for uh, CABGs coronary artery bypass surgeries and uh, wall replacements mitral and aortic all these cardio thoracic surgeries with uh, poor ejection fraction, the weak heart. This is the ideal agent of choice because it has least cardiovascular depression, only small reduction in BP and heart rate. So this is very, very cardio stable and it is used in shock elderly patients and this cardiovascular compromise for the cardiothoracic surgeries. This is the ideal agent of choice. And respiratory system similar to other drugs, transient apnea and can cause coughs or hiccups. So for supraglottic airway disease, so laryngeal mask airway, this is not ideal. So only drug uh, ideal for a uh, laryngeal mask airway in person is Propofol. GIT, there is increased incidence of nausea and vomiting, and is metabolized by hepatic and plasma stress. And distribution is predominantly urinary illness, not night from one to five hours. So, what are the adverse effects of it? Similar to propofol, like pain and injection, and thromboflavitis. And there is frequently unpleasant recovery accompanied by nausea and vomiting. And then the main problem with it is this is also on phase and transmit, most commonly asked. Adrenocortical suppression because it inhibits 11 beta hydroxylase, which is a, an enzyme very important in adrenal steroid production. So, a single induction dose blocks the normal stress induced increase in adrenocortical production up to 24 hours in elderly patients. So, continuous inf infusion of etomidate for sedation has been shown to increase mortality. So, any infusion drugs always should give some breaks. And this is another wonder drug, ketamine hydrochloride, available as a colorless liquid. This is a 10 cyclidin derivative. It produces dissociative anesthesia. So, what is this dissociation? There is a dissociation between thalamocortical and limbic systems in the brain. So, what it appears like? The dissociative anesthesia like resembles a cataleptic state. That means patient will be unconscious and uh, she will be induced in anesthesia, but eyes remain open, and you can see the nystagmus that the eyeballs are rotating. So you feel that patient is awake. This is that known as dissociative anesthesia, which is peculiar to ketamine. And it is kind of available in vials as 10 mg per ml and 50 mg per ml also. And for central pressure, without preservative for central neuroxylitis, for giving spinal anesthesia and all, we can use ketamine without preservative as a supplement extra dose. In this ketamine contains of S and R uh, isomers, optical isomers. It produces as ketamine produces more intense analgesia, more rapid metabolism and recovery. And the preservative is benzothenium chloride. This preservative included should not be given for central neuroaxial blocks for spinal or epidurals. Only IV injections we can use. These are the stereoisomers R and S. So mechanism of action, it is different from thiopentone, propofol, or etomidate. All we have seen is GABA stimulating action for those drugs. But for this, it inhibits NMD receptor, that is N-methyl D aspartate. It also inhibits serotonin and muscarinic receptors. So onset of action little prolonged than other drugs, like 30 to 60 seconds. And uh, IM also we can give, unlike thiopentone and propofol. So more, and uh, orally also we can give. So for IV induction, it is the shortest onset of time. 
30 to 60 seconds in the intramuscular 5 to 10 minutes and orally 25 to 45 minutes and the duration of action is short acting only 10 to 15 minutes so doses for induction of one system 1 to 2 mg per kg ketamine is particularly the drug of choice for bronchial asthmatic patients because it causes bronchodilation and then tetralogy of fallow because it maintains systemic asthma patients and hypovolemic patients because it does not cause hypotension unlike thiopentone and propofol and for analgesia dose 0.5 mg per kg bolus followed by infusion pre-medication it is also used as pre-medication to relieve anxiety in patients undergoing surgery where we can do different routes intramuscular 3 to 5 mg per kg intranasal we can produce the drops in nose also 3 to 6 mg per kg and oral syrups 3 to 10 mg per kg and we have discussed the known that this is a bronchodilator so for treatment of status asthmaticus also we can give as an infusion dose of 30 to 40 mg per kg per minute under the sole anesthetic for short procedures can be given as infusion without nitric oxide 30 to 90 mics per kg per minute and with nitric oxide 15 to 45 mics per kg per minute and the points to remember with use of ketamine are it can produce hallucinations and increase its secretions which are sometimes troublesome during in operation theaters during induction hence always before ketamine you should give a benzodiazepine like medazolam and an anti silagog that is like lipoperolate which will decrease the oral secretions and pharmacodynamics, we discussed that it produces dissociative anesthesia, that is dissociation between thalamocortical and limbic systems. Where thalamocortex is depressed and limbic system is stimulated. And it produces intense analgesia and amnesia. And unlike other drugs which we have discussed previously, ketamine increases cerebral metabolic rate, cerebral blood flow, and increases the intracranial pressure. And also increases intraocular pressure. And this cardiovascular system, unlike other drugs, initially it causes... Uh, Previous drugs we have discussed, they cause hypotension, but it causes hypertension by indirect stimulation of sympathetic system. But in larger doses, direct myocardial depression leads to hypotension. Respiratory system, it is a very good bronchodilator, but does not obtain airway reflex as well, like propofol. So, not suitable for laryngeal mask airway insertion because it does not suppress airway reflex as well and increases secretions also. And also other secretions like salivary glands, bronchial, everywhere. And adverse effects are uh, emergency reactions, that is, hallucinations. While recovering from ketamine, this is due to depression of auditor and visual relay nuclei leading to misperception of the auditor and visual stimuli, and then muscle rigidity, and then hypertension and tachycardia. And then benzodiazepines, so metazolam hydrochloride, this is a water soluble imidazole ring which is stable, stable in aqueous solutions, and P, it is solute, solubility is pH dependent. Initially at less pH, it is water soluble and at body pH, it is lipid soluble. We are available as oils containing 1 mg per ml and it does not cause any pain on injection. It is mainly for amnesia, not for induction. But in high doses, you can cause induction that is routinely not available, not advisable. This is also similar to other drugs like activation of chloride channels of GABA receptors in 30 to 60 seconds on, onset. Duration of action, 1 hour, that is long acting not uh, ultra short acting like remaining drugs eliminated in liver by hydroxylation conjugation for induction of anesthesia initially we will go for producing amnesia and to elevate anxiety of the patient 0.1 to 0.2 mg per kg IV. and also for regional anesthesia supplementation we will use for pre-medication we will use 0.2 mg per kg orally and then it is a popular drug for sedating critically ill patients in icu as it is cardio stable it can also be used as anti-convulsant on the pharmacodynamics, dose dependent depression of CNS, it is relatively cardio stable, like it omitted, does not affect heart rate and blood pressure much, and does not uh, suppress respirations. And then flumazenil, this is a benzodiazepine antagonist available in vials as 0.1 mg per ml, usually given 100 micrograms boluses. This is used in benzodiazepine poisonings, duration about an hour, adverse effects are nausea, vomiting, agitation, and seizures. And then some other drugs like narcotic agonists. These mainly act on uh, opioid receptors. This is but not useful for this induction of anesthesia, but for analgesia and all we will use. So these opioid receptors located in uh, brain stem spinal cord and GAT that you have already studied in pharmacology in mu kappa and sigma receptors. So these narcotic agonists, uh, they will have rapid distribution following IV injection. They are metabolized by the liver, liver and majority of the inactive metabolites are excreted unchanged in the urine. CNS, they produce sedation by interfering with sensory perception of painful stimuli and large doses produce unconsciousness, but they are generally incapable of producing anesthesia. And due to stimulation of chemo, chemo receptor trigger zone, they produce emesis and nausea. 
and respiratory dose related depression of respiratory rate and minute volume and increased tidal volume it into slow and deep respiration it is reversed by naloxone administration and then cvs little myocardial depressant effect supplementation with either nitrous oxide and benzodiazepines may depress the cardiac output and the decrease systemic vascular resistance and uh, the synthetic opioids are less likely to release histamine they produce bradycardia by stimulation of vagal nucleus in the brain stem and then in GAT, they decrease GI mobility. This constipation and post op illness are most common complications when we give opiates like fentanyl and morphine during the surgery times. And they increase biliary tract tone, leading to biliary colic when the bile stones are there for undiagnosed patients. They increase bladder sphincter tone, leading to urinary retention. So, post op complications like constipation, biliary colic, urinary retention, all these we can see when we use excess these opioids in the OT. So commonly used fentanyl and morphine. Fentanyl is a commonly used during induction of anesthesia. It is a rapid onset and predictable duration of action 30 to 40 minutes. Morphine uses in the perioperative fluid for a long-lasting analysis. Post op also we can give. It should be administered slowly because it is the side effect of the histamine release. And these are commonly used in narcotic agents, fentanyl and morphine. You can see this potency ratio. Fentanyl is 100 times more potent than morphine. And common doses, analgesic doses are uh, morphine 10 mg and fentanyl 100 micrograms. So that is the topic on IV anesthetics. Thank you very much. Hello?